Hello and welcome back to another Chemistry Academy video. In this video we're going to look at esters, what they're used for, what they look like, how you name them and how you make them. So to start off with, uh, esters are used in fragrances and flavourings, generally in food and drink materials, sometimes in perfumes but more often than not your fancier perfumes will contain essential oils as the fragrances instead of the esters. You'll learn about essential oils later on in unit two. So that's what they're used for. Their functional group, so every family of molecule has its own functional group and for an ester that is an ester link. So that is this arrangement here where you've got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then a single bonded oxygen next to it. And that's in the middle of a chain of carbons. If it's a short and structural formula, you'll see it written as COO. I like to call, call it the Q in the middle that doesn't say mu. So if you ever see a Q in the middle of a molecule, then that's an ester link and it means the molecule is an ester. So when it's written in short and structural formula, a key thing to remember is that the first oxygen is the double bonded oxygen. So that's important when it comes to naming the esters from a short and structural formula. And we will look at that in a little minute. So that's what your ester look, looks like. Like I said, there's normally a carbon on either side of this. So just make sure if there's a hydrogen here, then that's actually a carboxyl group and not an ester link anymore. So just watch out for that. So esters are made by a condensation reaction and then they are also broken down by hydrolysis. So these are the exact same reactions that occur when making and breaking down proteins. So esters and proteins are quite similar in terms of how they, of how they react chemically. So they're both made by condensation reactions and they're both broken down by hydrolysis. I will give you the definitions of these reactions in a minute because you can be asked for them sometimes and it's useful to know just know what those definitions are. Um, but if we're looking at the condensation reaction of making an ester, um, they're always made from a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So it's a hydroxyl group and a carboxyl group that react with each other in order to form an ester link. And in the process of the reaction, a molecule of water is lost. So each molecule keeps one oxygen. So that means that the carboxyl group loses its OH and the hydroxyl group just loses the H. Okay, so each one keeps an oxygen. And that's where you get the molecule of water that is lost. So this is where our water comes from in making the ester. So we make a molecule of H2O and then this carbon joins up with this oxygen to make our ester. Which means our ester will look like, so that's our double bonded carbon, that then gets um, joined onto that oxygen. And then we've got two carbons after that. I always like to draw in the hydrogens last. So then I'll just go back and draw in the hydrogens. So that is the ester we end up making from this carboxylic acid and this alcohol. And that's what it looks like. That's not very well drawn. Okay. In terms of then naming this ester, so the name of the ester comes from the name of the reactants that were used to make it. And you're just really looking at what the prefixes were. So the prefix for your alcohol comes at the start of the name and the prefix on your carboxylic acid comes at the end part of the name. So every ester has a name that follows the basis of something ile, something anoate, and the somethings are the prefixes on your reactants. So if you've used uh, ethanol, the prefix on that alcohol is eth, so then that means that you would have ethyl for the start of the ester name. Our carboxylic acid prefix was meth, which means that the end of the ester name would be methanoate. Okay, so the ester made from ethanol and methanoic acid is called ethyl methanoate. So the way I remember which prefix comes first is that 
Alcohol is a smaller word than carboxylic acid, so that goes with the smaller ending. Or the other way you can remember it is that it kind of goes in alphabetical order based on the type of molecule. So A for alcohol comes before C for carboxylic acid. So it's the alcohol prefix that comes first. Okay, so you can remember it either of those ways. The other thing to bear in mind about the, the reactions to make ester is that it's a reversible reaction. So you will see this reversible reaction sign instead of the usual arrow. What this means though is that you'll never get 100% yield, so you'll never have all of your reactants turning into products, which therefore means that at the end of your reaction you'll still have a mixture of everything. So if you go to make nester and you leave your reaction for even two hours, you'll come back and there'll still be some methanolic acid left, there'll be some ethanol there, there'll also be some of your ethyl methanoate and there'll also be some water. So you will always have a mixture of everything. You'll never get 100% yield. So if we look at another example where we're gonna draw the ester that's formed and name it, got two reactants here. So this is the carboxylic acid, which contains the carboxyl group. And then we've got alcohol that contains the hydroxyl group. So they are the functional groups. The types of molecules would be the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. So try not to get confused between what a functional group is and what a type of molecule is. So the functional group is the part of the molecule that undergoes a reaction. The type of molecule is just what family we would then put that molecule into based on the functional group that it has. So <clears throat> remember when the condensation reaction is occurring, each molecule gets left with one oxygen. So the water molecule that we're losing comes from here. That's our water that was produced. So now this carbon joins up with this oxygen. So if I just draw the carbon chain first of all, we've got one, two, three, four carbons in a chain. And then it goes to that oxygen, and then there's another three carbons. So height the space here. And then I'll just go and draw in all my hydrogens. the fun bit. Almost make you dislike organic chemistry. Okay so that's our ester plus our molecule of water and this here is our ester link. So with a Q in the middle and <laughs> it doesn't say moo. I'm going to convert this into a shortened structural formula just so you can see what that would look like. So Basically, you collapse everything around each carbon. So this first carbon's got three hydrogens on it, so that'd be CH3. Then you've got a CH2, a CH2, and then this becomes COO. Q in the middle, doesn't say moo. And then the CH2, a CH2, and then a CH3. So that'd be the ester in shortened structural formula. And again, that is your ester link there. So if you see a short structural formula with that COO in the middle of carbon chain, then that tells you it's an ester molecule that you're looking at. So if we name this, we have to name our reactants first, ideally. Well, actually, we don't have to. So let's just name the ester from its actual picture. So when you're naming it, you have to kind of split it up into what it originally was. So you need to find what was the alcohol part and what was the carboxylic acid part. So you would split the ester link down the middle and the side with the single bonded oxygen is the alcohol and the side with the double bonded oxygen is the carboxylic acid side. So then if you remember it's the alcohol side prefix that comes first. So on that side we've got a total of one, two, three carbons. So that would be propyl. And then on the carboxylic acid side, which is the second prefix you use, it, there's one, two, three, four carbons. Don't forget to count that carbon with double bonded oxygen because that's sometimes left out by people. So the prefix for four would be butte. So it'd be propyl butte anoate. Okay, following the something ile, something anoate pattern. If you were naming it from the shortened structural formula, you just Again, find the ester link, the Q 
in the middle and then you split it again so that each side keeps an oxygen. If you remember, I said before, the first oxygen is the double bonded one. So this is always the carboxylic acid side. And then this is all the alkyl side because that's got a single bonded oxygen. Okay, once we worked out which part was from which reactant, we then just do the same thing, count the carbons. So the alcohol prefix comes first, so that's one, two, three carbons, giving you the propyl. And then the carboxylic acid side has one, two, three, four carbons, which gives you the butte. Okay, as easy as that. Before we move on to another example, I'm just going to give you the definitions of condensation reaction and the hydrolysis reaction. So a condensation reaction is the joining of two molecules with the loss of a small molecule, which is usually water, but you need to watch because sometimes it can be carbon dioxide, sometimes it can be methanol, sometimes it can be ethanol. So as long as you've joined two molecules and you've lost a small molecule in the process, then you can describe that as being condensation. Hydrolysis is the splitting of a molecule by the reaction with water. So lysis means splitting, hydro means water. So this word means water splitting, so it's splitting with water. Any other thing you see, any other word in science you see that's got lysis at the end, it means it's a splitting process. So, and then whatever comes before the lysis is what you're splitting it with. So when you learned about electrolysis, then that's splitting with electroelectricity. Photolysis is splitting with light because photo means light. So that's what hydrolysis means. And that would just be the reverse reaction where you're adding the water, breaking the ester link and reforming the alcohol and the carboxylic acid. So we'll look at an example of writing it backwards just now. So I've got this ester here and we're going to hydrolyze it by reacting with water in order to break the ester link and turn it back into the alcohol and the carboxylic acid. So it's basically the exact same process, it's just you're doing it backwards. So we still want to leave each molecule or each side with one oxygen. So we always split the ester link here so that each side gets left with one oxygen. That means this is one of the molecules we make, this is the other molecule we make when the water gets added to these two molecules. So if I just copy down what is resulting from the splitting, first of all. So these, that's me just split the molecule up. I've not actually added any water yet. Okay, water splits into H and OH. That's what it always splits up into. So for our side that's got the double bonded oxygen, we need to add the OH there to make it a carboxyl again. And then the side with the single bonded oxygen, that gets the H to make it a hydroxyl again. So then that would be the carboxylic acid and the alcohol that we make from hydrolyzing this ester. So this ester is called methyl propanoate because there's one carbon on the alcohol side, three on the carboxylic acid side. And when we hydrolyze it, we make propanoic acid and then just methanol. So I'm gonna finish off the examples of the structures of the esters with this example here. It's a slightly more complicated. So you wouldn't be asked to name this ester because it's not made from a primary alcohol. Um, however, you could be asked to name the alcohol that was used to make it. So what we're gonna do is we'll hydrolyze it, break it down and work out what the reactants actually were. So again, find the ester link split it so that each side keeps an oxygen and then we're just going to draw what is produced from that. So that's the two thing, two parts split up. Double bonded oxygen part gets the OH to make a carboxyl the single oxygen gets an H to make a hydroxyl. So this is ethanoic acid because it's the acid with two carbons. If you do forget the prefixes, you can use the data booklet to help you. There's a page with melting and boiling points of organic compounds. 
you can look that up it's got the first eight alkenes in order so you can work out the first eight prefixes from that this molecule here so it's an alcohol with three carbons so it's a propanol but the uh, hydroxyl groups on the second carbon so this is propantool so that ester was made by reacting ethanolic acid with propantool and um, so that's why it's got this weird t shape because the hydroxyl groups in the middle and um, so if you do get a question asking to even draw a product from ethanolic acid and propantool just rotate the, molecule, the alcohol molecule around the hydroxyl groups pointing to the carboxyl group and then you can easily find see where your water molecules are moved and just join them up. Lastly we're going to talk about the practical lab practical for making an ester um, and just the things that you need to include when you're doing it to keep yourself safe and make sure that you effectively make your product. So this is a setup you would normally have. You would have a beaker as a hot water bath. So the reason you use a hot water bath and not a Bunsen burner is because the alcohol is flammable. It's specifically the alcohol that's flammable. The rest of the reactants would, would have been all right with the Bunsen, but alcohol is flammable. So that's the key thing to highlight in terms of why you would use the hot water bath. You then also need uh, on your boiling tube a wet paper towel and that acts as a condenser. So the, re the product, your ester, is volatile. So if you don't have this condenser, then you'll lose your product to the atmosphere. It'll just evaporate and disappear. So your wet paper towel acts as a condenser. Sometimes you can use like a cold, a test tube filled with cold water instead. Um, so just anything that's gonna cool the mixture down and stop anything evaporating and leaving. The cotton wool is really just to prevent some splashing um, and then in your boiling tube you'll have your alcohol, your carboxylic acid and the other thing you need to add and you won't make your ester if you don't have it is concentrated sulfuric acid. It needs to be concentrated and that is the catalyst. So you need to remember that's the catalyst for ester formation, the concentrated sulfuric acid or conch H2SO4. Okay? If you don't have that there your reaction won't work. So you'll just come back 15 minutes later and you'll still only have your alcohol and carboxylic acid there and there'll be no ester. Once you've done the reaction, you then add your reaction mixture to sodium hydrogen carbonate at the end and that's just to neutralise any excess acid. Because remember, well your catalyst, it won't get used up in the reaction because catalysts don't get used up. It's an acid so you need to neutralise that. But also the ester formation condensation reaction is reversible so you're not going to react at all of your carboxylic acid either. So the sodium hydrogen carbonate it will fizz when you add your mixture and um, so you'll get a lot of effervescence and then once the fizzing stops that's you you then know that your acid extra excess acid is neutralized. The two things you need to look for to make sure you've actually formed your ester are an oily layer forming so you'd get an oily layer floating on the top if you've actually made your ester and then you'll also be able to smell a sweet smell. The sweet smell you don't normally get until after you've neutralised your excess acid because the acid smell is usually a bit overpowering. So if you get an oily layer then that's a good sign. You can then neutralise your excess acid and then you should get a nice sweet smell. So that's essentially all the need to knows on esters for the higher chemistry course. So if you like this video, please give me a like and if you've not yet subscribed, then please subscribe.